Thank you very much. That's, uh, that's Mr. Clay Rose on the, uh, uh, per perhaps the new Boulder County Tonight uh, theme song. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, an unexpected pleasure. I shall now dive blushing. Um, welcome to the show. Any news? No news? Wonderful. Um, let's see. Tonight our guest is Mr. Clay Rose of the Gasoline Lollipops. What a delightful character, of course. Um, nothing new going on in my life, I guess. Uh, oh, uh, if you're watching this, of course, when it airs on Longmont Pu Public Television at like 10 p.m. or whatever, then uh, you're probably, well, wake up, Grandma. Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Um, did you fall asleep in front of the TV? Yeah. Well, it's time to go to bed. Turn off the TV and go to bed. You're up late. You're up too late, Grandma. Huh. Uh, it's a very common theme, I'm afraid, for Grandma. Stays up late, not supposed to. Uh, let's see. What's new in my world? Oh my God. My TikTok algorithm is very pff, troublesome for me. At first, it was really fun. Had like a nice mix of like aliens and like, you know, ladies dancing or whatever. But over the months that I was using it or whatever, the algorithm discovered that like my true darkness is like I need a lot of therapy advice. And so I was starting to get way more of that, way less of the dancing people. And I had lots of complaints about that. So I've been trying to like lean purposeful in the other direction, you know? I want the fucking robots in the future to think I'm boring. Yeah, what else is going on? Uh, oh, our classic nemesis, the billionaires, are back in the news again. Well, hello. It's me, your friend and neighbor and fellow patriot, Donald Hooverdoo, owner of Hooverdoo Automotive Sales here in Longmont, Colorado. Now, I'm not here today to remind you that you could be driving a brand new, fully equipped, state-of-the-art, very beautiful Toyota Camry right off the lot today for a very low, reasonable fee. No, sir. Instead, today I'm here to announce my candidacy for Longmont City Council. I'm a business-first Democrat. I'm a no-nonsense, long-time liberal, and I'm here to take care of business. And just like we do at Hoover Do Automotive Sales here in Longmont, Colorado, we're gonna get our deals Hoover done. So as we enter this election season, just remember, a vote for Hoover Do is a vote for lower taxes, a better economy, and a return to normalcy for American workers. I'm Donald Hoover Do. I know everyone is hurting, and I wanna take care of business. This ad is paid for by the committee to elect Donald Hoover Do private funding, and the Toyota Camry. Hi, I'm Kevin Stilwell, and I'm running for Longmont City Council. As a modern Democrat, I know that it's important for me to be talking about the right things, because that is what being a modern Democrat is talking about the right things. I think I'm a great candidate for Longmont City Council because I'm already succeeding at one of the most difficult jobs in the world. I'm a parent. <laughs> Hashtag dad boss. I have two beautiful children and just the other day I was having a conversation with my daughter, Equity, and she asked me, Dad, why do you want to be in Longmont City Council? And I told her, darling, it's because dad wants to use his talking to speak up for everyone in our community. 
And then my little two-year-old son came up and said, Dad, I'm proud of you. And I said, I'm proud of you too, Black Lives Matter. If you would like me to serve you on Longmont City Council, I know it'll be my job to speak up and speak out. So when it comes to the most important political and social issues of our day, like police brutality and equal rights, you can bet Kevin Stilwell will be talking. Democrats are talking. Kevin Stilwell is talking. This advertisement was entirely paid for by private funding. Hello again, it's Donald Huberdu, your friend, neighbor, and non-specific religious devil fag. I'm here with this ice-cold, delicious Pepsi-Cola to tell you about my candidacy for Longmont City Council. Right now, America needs solid, mature leadership with a laser focus on supporting our struggling millionaires and billionaires who are the lifeblood of this nation. Modern American heroes like Jeff Bezos and others who create millions of jobs every year should not be burdened by the state with oversight and regulations and taxes that keep him from growing his business and helping more Americans. By helping Jeff Bezos, we also help untold numbers of desperate, disenfranchised Americans. Desperate Americans in a struggling economy. Americans who just need one break, one single opportunity. Americans willing to do whatever it takes to achieve their version of the American dream. You see, that's the kind of American this great nation was built upon. And that's who I'm running to represent on Longmont City Council. Americans who are willing to work any job, at any pay, because hard work and business are American values. Right now, America needs mature, laser focus on these issues. Right now, we need someone with experience, someone steady, not some person who's only been a Democrat a few years. I'm the kind of steady Democrat that the Longmont community needs. I decided I was a Democrat back in 1980. And as the years have gone on and I've changed my life and grown, I haven't even reconsidered the question. I don't flip-flop. What we don't need is some naive millennial talking us to death. My friends, the stakes are high in this election, and we cannot afford to be fighting social justice battles. I'm Donald Huberdo. I'm here to take care of business. And not just with talking, neither. This advertisement is paid for by the committee to elect Donald Huberdo, private funding, and an ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Hey, 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 this is your friend and candidate for Longmont City Council, Kevin Stilwell. It's good to see you again, but I come today with heavy news. Recently, my opponent in this race released an advertisement which literally ended with him saying the N-word. And I quote, I'm Donald Huberdu. I'm taking care of business and not just with talking inward. Obviously, this kind of language is disgusting and completely disqualifying from this race. Mr. Huberdu is an old white racist. <sighs> He's gone now, and we never have to speak of him again. He's gone now. 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 I'm inspired by real American heroes like Elon Musk, who pulled himself up by his bootstraps and just a few million dollars from his family. Now he runs one of the biggest, most successful companies in the world. That's a rags to riches story that I understand and I can get behind. Imagine the good that Elon Musk could have done with the money that he received from his family if the inheritance tax was fully abolished. That's the kind of change that makes all the difference in the life of a regular worker. America really is a place where dreams can come true 
And if we all just keep showing up to work and working as hard as we can, we will all be billionaires. So when it comes time to vote in this election cycle, I hope you'll remember a vote for Kevin Stilwell is a vote for decency and for us all to be billionaires. And I am the only choice for city council now. I'll see you soon, Longmont. This advertisement was paid for by Private Financing and the Committee for Dark Money and Politics. I'm Donald Hibbert of Mentos with a Fresh Maker. Now listen to me, you son of a bitch. I'm not a racist. You're a racist. I'm not canceled. You're canceled. I'm not a racist. It's impossible. I have been a Democrat since the 80s. I voted for Obama. There is an African-American man who works at my office. He cleans up around the place. We call him Jimmy. He's a great employee. I will not be called a racist or a bigot or old. I am not old, you little son of a bitch. That makes me so fucking mad. Hi, hi, it's me, Kevin Stilwell. Um, I'm running for Longmont City Council, and um, and I would very much like to read you this public statement. Um, I know that things can get a little crazy during political season. Um, I'd like to voluntarily apologize for any appropriate. In, 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 I would like to voluntarily apologize for any inappropriate behavior on my part. Um, I just love this country so much, and it's time to get back to the real issues like further tax relief for millionaires, better and more consistent public posturing on important issues while still maintaining the status quo, and changing the corporate gains tax to better reflect the freedom of America. Um, I, I'm Kevin Stilwell, and I'm talking. Hello. This is... You know who it is. I would like the opportunity now, please, to voluntarily read this public statement. I know that things can get a little crazy during political season, and I'd like to voluntarily apologize for any inappropriate behavior on my part. I just love this country so much. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. This is me doing it. This is me doing it. You don't have to threaten me. I'm doing it. And it's time to get back to the real issues like further tax relief for millionaires. Better and more consistent public posturing on important issues while still maintaining the actual status quo, and, of course, changing the corporate gains tax to better reflect the freedom of America. I was John... I was Donald Huberdeau once. Ha, 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 ha.
No, but I do appreciate you coming on the show. And I, I, thank you very much. I, I feel like you're a great artist. And um, I've been writing songs my whole life. And I, I'd like to think I sort of like know about the art form on some level. I feel like you're a great writer. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. If you know anything about it, then you're ahead of me. I feel like I do. I feel like rhyming's nice. I feel, I don't know. Being able to do it again is a nice trick too, you know. Um, no, I, um, I appreciate you coming on. Um, and I want to respect that you're a great artist. One thing you may not know about me is that I'm actually one of the world's uh, great interviewers. Oh, so that's right. awesome. Yes. Well, I'm in luck then. Yes, you are in luck, I'm afraid. Uh, and so I, I've got like a few like really unique, beautiful questions to ask you. And the first one I want to ask you is, um, where do you... Where do you get your um? Where do you get your ideas for your songs? <laughs> My favorite, <laughs> you ever get that question in interviews? I well, what I was hoping that you weren't going to ask <laughs> yeah. is what comes first, the music or the lyrics? That was the next thing I was oh going to say. Oh my god! Uh, what comes first? The I was like lyrics? actually driving here in the car. I was rehearsing ways to gently let you down if you ask me that question. <laughs> yeah, because I'm never answering that yeah. fucking question. What, kind of, what is the genre that you? It doesn't hurt your voice. <laughs> <laughs> how do you remember all? How do you remember? How do you remember all those words? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, none of those questions. But I, I do want to like talk to you about being in the arts, because yeah. like some episodes, you know, it, it seems like it's un- inappropriate to always have uh, a politician. I have to chat with. Let me ask you this. Um, I think the arts uh, is sort of like the politician's job in that it is a public service oriented job and sometimes underappreciated, certainly under monetized. Um, why, why are you in the arts? As, yes, right. You know? why, why would I... Uh, hang my soul out like a wet rag to dry and for public service yeah um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's exactly what I mean Cliff. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the only that I've tried not to and I lost my mind mm-hmm. that's the only I, I know that it's um, in all kinds of ways it doesn't make sense at all um but in the one way that it really does is, and it's the reason why I got into music in the first place, because because I heard a Leonard Cohen record when I was like 12 or 13. Okay. And um, and he, I, I really identified with how broken he was. And it was the first time that I really saw for sure that you could take that brokenness and make it something beautiful. I see. Right? And that there was any constructive use for it at all, other than just being broken. Yeah. And uh, and when I saw that, like, oh, there's worth in this. Like, you can do something with this. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And that's what allowed me to save myself and to save my sanity mm-hmm. was finding that. And so um, when we play live, I mean, there's a lot of crappy shows, as you know. There's a sure. lot of people that don't care or you know people watching football or whatever but I haven't been an expert in, in that area the crappy shows thing if you need advice oh, on it I've yeah, done I have, a lot of them I've done plenty <laughs> <laughs> I had like a decade of paying my dues but um, the good shows when people are there and you can tell that there's this sort of like communal exercising of demons oh, right yes and that's what we're all doing together and that's the real show like that's the real that's why I do it is for those shows and uh, we used to play every Tuesday night at Waterloo in Louisville we that for nine years we had that gig and uh-huh. the last I'd say four years it was off the hook mm-hmm. because everybody knew what to expect and they would come every Tuesday and we called it church and people would come to church and we'd sweat it out and the place was tiny and would get packed and we'd just be sweating profusely and the music was loud and you would just it was like one body sort of like shaking it off you know I, I goddamn do know actually yes sir um, when I was a younger person I'm still very young and handsome thank you 
But when I was like 19 and shit, I was a professional worship leader at a church. Oh, okay? wow. And what, it's what church was it? Down in Texas. What kind of church was it? Well, they call it non-denominational. Okay. It means like they're, they'll take a Baptist or a Methodist or whatever. They'll cash a check from anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, he doesn't have to put it like that. But he did. <laughs> um, so I, I was like remembering that's kind of how I developed my musical skill set. It was just like three chord songs and emotional content out the fucking wazoo. Yeah. Right. And they would all sing along, right? And they'd all kind of like have the, like a concert effect like you yeah. have. That it's the same, like you say, it's like church. Yeah. It's like uh, the burner community called uh, like a tribe. That's our tribe, you know? I hear that's not uh, PC anymore. Yeah, you know, I hear that's not PC either. It got canceled for us, that word. We're not allowed to say that word. That's probably fair, but As like. As white guys, we're not allowed to say a lot of fuck words. I think that's fair. We're very good at language. I'm yeah, sure we can find new words. That's fair. <laughs> I'm just letting you know you fucked up. <laughs> no, no, I think they call it that. I think the burner community does still call it that. And furthermore. Oh, the burning man. Yeah, the Burning Man. Community. Well, yeah, they wear headdresses and shit. Like they like you know. I know they wear like all kinds of like appropriated <laughs> things. Like that's like half the thing is like the melting pot of ideas. I can't say I'm against it or for it. I'm a First Amendment guy, but you're right. Or whatever, whatever makes people happy. If you want to get naked and go out into the 120 degree desert, you know, and get sand blown up your crotch, that's your business. For me personally. I could not think of a more accurate description of hell than Burning Man. All right, we're going to have to connect on this real quick because I have thoughts, and we now we have to talk about this. I That's one of the reasons I like going on tour. I always felt like, and I can never really feel like I'm clean, sleeping in hotels or whatever, but Burning Man, I don't know. We bless the whatever artists, happy people, but like, yeah, dirty is bad for me. I don't like dust. Especially I, if you're tripping on drugs, and they all are. And so he's like, you go out there where there's not a bath for a hundred miles, and you're gonna be out there sweating and covered in dirt for four days, tripping. That's a problem. No way, I would lose my mind. I, I would literally be spitting on my body and with a toothbrush, making mud. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. I, okay, so I recently went out to an art project in Utah uh, to shoot uh, an erotic film, uh, in in like the salt flats out there. And you were the star. So no, no, I was just helping make the movie. You were a grip. Yeah. Oh, I was a grip, all right. Uh, but um, we were like shooting this like fire dancing thing out in the like salt flats, and um, then the, we we showed up kind of early in the week, and then later in the week there was supposed to be a big art festival, like a Burning Man type thing in Utah on the salt flats. Right, and uh, it is exactly as you describe it. Uh, it's windy, salty in this case. Right, it's worse. Instead of sand being blown on your crotch, it's salt. I don't know. I, th- I prefer salt, I think. Is but that like we had. Though? In your orifices. If, yeah, yeah. If you were to walk around barefoot, I think it would hurt your feet. If we're you're walking, shoes walking time. around naked, you're getting salt in your orifices. Oh, my, my dearest companion, Arvashi, brought me these shoes just for that trip. I can slip them on and not walk too much in the, in the dirty places. But I actually, it was like a, we had a good time, of course. We were surrounded by awesome people, whatever, and like allegedly a lot of drugs. And um, these other people were doing drugs. No, no, they would never. So my friend actually brought like a a camper thing full of like water and like a shower. So you could shower once a day and like there was cooked food and chef and stuff. But then like our whole camp blew the fuck down on like day two. And like, that's how I hurt my hand. I stabbed myself in the hand. Because uh, the wind was blowing? Yeah, and it just frustrated me, you know. Um, I, we had to take down this big tarp and we were, I was fucking just cutting it off the thing because it was a fucking emergency. Uh, and I, as I did it, I fucking really hurt myself. Uh, and I had to have nerve surgery. That's Jeez. why I can't Oh yeah, I remember this. when your hand was all in the cast yeah. and everything. Can't do it. All, all done playing guitar for a minute here. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Just do the Django Reinhardt thing. Yeah, but like, I, that, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to goddamn relearn to play guitar. You know what I mean? Why not? <laughs> what else are you going to do? I'm not doing this. <laughs> you know? I'm just doing something else. I sell paintings. I do watercolor stuff. I make movies. Whatever. You, if, if you the, don't need to play guitar? I can still play piano a little bit. Yeah. And once this gets a little more use, I'm, I'm sure I'm pl- coming back to playing guitar. But whatever, whatever. Whatever. Okay. I don't mean to like derail and talk okay, about yeah, yeah. This but is about 
being dirty in the desert, yeah. even though you're surrounded by beautiful art and beautiful people, I mean, it's skippable, that, the dirty desert part of it. It's not as bad as being dirty in a city, though. Or in the forest. Well, no, like city dirty oh. is the worst. Have city you ever been dirty. homeless in the city? No, sir. Yeah. No, I never have. It gets gnarly. Oh, it's yeah. a different kind of gnarly. Oh, my God. I don't have any experience at all. Yeah, that's gross. Oh, man. We worry about that community often on this show because Boulder County is a little bit strange. Nazis. They're tough. They're it's, Nazis. In, in Boulder, it's fucking mean. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was down there uh, throughout the winter. We were doing this, uh, we call it Harvest for the Homeless. Mm-hmm. And we were down there every Tuesday at the band show. Really? Yeah, and we you know, get close together. Man, it was freezing cold. And this has been a thing since I was a little kid. Boulder City has gone and has fluctuated a little bit with how they treat the homeless. Right now, it's kind of as bad as it's ever been. Yeah, that was one of the main things we talked about. Yeah, and like, you know, back when I was a kid, the Boulder Homeless Shelter, and I think this is still the case, if you don't blow zeros in a breathalyzer, you don't get in. And so on a night when it's 20 below zero, and you come up and you blow because you've been drinking whiskey trying to keep yourself warm, and then these dudes just freeze to death. Yeah, and there's a surprisingly low number of beds Yeah, in Boulder as well. Um, well, they don't want to house them. They don't want to. No, they, they don't, don't want, want them to like try and camp either. No. They have like an anti-camping ordinance, which basically right. just means if you're homeless and it's night and you're unconscious, you, it's illegal. Yeah, it's crazy too, you know, like with uh, COVID and all this, and there's a lot of people that could not afford their rent. and Yeah. Know, the, and when the moratorium on evictions was lifted, uh, you know, I think the city council or whatever in Boulder likes to think of the homeless, generally speaking, as crackheads and yes. mentally ill junkies. Stuff they want like to that. try and stigmatize them yeah, so exactly. they, they feel like it's their problem and not right. like a community. But problem. when the moratorium on evictions was lifted, all of a sudden we got a lot of normal people, normal, yeah. right, family people out there and they're getting their tents just swept yes um and rent is fucking 1600 1700 for like a one bedroom whatever i don't know what people are supposed to do no and then they just try to push them out to denver which they do and then denver comes and bulldozes like a mile long camp along the plat and like who is that helping no does that help i think it's helping the people that like to jog down the right path and see only pretty things. They're tired of seeing the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here we are in like Boulder County. You would think like, you know, being like kind of a liberal place, of course, some of the stuff is just like a weird blind spot. Well, I don't think it's helpful either. I think it's self-destructive. Like being blind or not seeing uh, poverty or sickness or death, right? Like, the more we hide those things from ourselves, the bigger the small imperfections of life seem to be, right? Mm-hmm. And we become focused on those. And there's an itch there that we're trying to scratch and we don't know what it is. And what it is is suffering. We are used to being right next to suffering. That's the natural way of living. So when you take that out, we need to find the source of suffering yes. because we feel it intrinsically. It's like part of our DNA. And if it's not poverty or sickness or death as it normally was for tens of thousands of years then it's that they did, forgot to put lemon in my non-fat latte you know what right. I mean and then I'm going to throw a fit about that or that the Dow dropped 2% or whatever right. the fuck yeah. you know and we get really crabby and isolated and miserable but if you go to like uh, Delhi right out there in the slums mm-hmm. and it's all right there the poverty, the sickness, the death. There's lepers on the street. And those people are the friendliest, most communal, like caring people. Mm. They all know, everybody knows their neighbors because you've got to to survive, you know. And they they live in these communities that are really um, interconnected and, and caring for each other. We don't have any of that. Yes, I agree. And I think like even normal people are more isolated than ever, of course, with all the COVID stuff that just came through, you know, I wonder, you know, 
what is there to do but some kind of like slowly try and change that emotional context in the, in the kind of like social conversation so that like it wouldn't seem such uh, an impossible task to sort of get back to relating to each other. Yeah, I think it's strange. I think that at some point we started thinking that evolution, if we were a truly evolved species, we would no longer have poverty, sickness, or death. Right. And so we do our best to hide those things to make it look like we've evolved. But that's not the dire real direction of evolution. The real direction of evolution point. is how do we relate to poverty, sickness, and death? Because we'll never eradicate them. You know what I mean? Boy, that's a fucking brilliant point. And so to not relate at all is not evolution. It's just delusion, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I hear when I talk about this issue basically every week. And the, the notes that I hear basically are, we're not sure what else to do other than what we're already doing or how to provide more... Um, economic juice toward those programs. Uh, and then also I hear this idea of like, if we provide those programs, it will attract more homeless people to our community. So like, it's this sort of like self-defeating way of approaching the problem. Every city in our county seems afraid to provide too many services. Mm -hmm. When really, if they could just sort of coordinate the services they do, they could all sort of be at the same level together, yeah. doing more, maybe. And you could also, I mean, they would be a model for every other city in America because they're all suffering this problem, right? That's right. And if one of the wealthiest cities in America, Boulder, right, had a really integrated system of dealing with homeless and mentally ill to where the community is actually relating to them and you know, and they're healing and we're getting along as a society and um, and there's compassion and people feel woke on a real level because they're actually fucking doing something. You yeah. know? I think that it could be a model for a lot of cities, you know, it's not, I don't know, what are they afraid is going to happen? That all of a sudden Boulder is going to become shanty town? <laughs> you know, like it's not. Really seems unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. They're afraid that they're going to have to spend that fucking 17% sugar tax on feeding the homeless, <laughs> you know, instead of what? I don't know. No, I, I, there are some ideas kind of bubbling up in our community. I'm not sure what I'm, a lot of them are sort of like projects people are doing, but like uh, there are some ideas for just like businesses themselves to start getting involved with like feeding these homeless folks. Uh, and that's something that any community could do across the, there's like, we're working on some kind Yeah, of we were doing that. And, you know, like uh, the cops, we never got kicked out um, when we were doing the Harvest for the Homeless, but we had plenty of cops let us know that they were not stoked about us being there and supporting and encouraging the homeless. Pro and like I said, this is like, you know, zero degree day and people out there are wearing wet socks. Yeah. And, you know. And that's what we're doing, is giving them dry socks and feet warmers and sleeping bags so that they don't freeze to death. And the cops are saying that we're encouraging them. <laughs> By what? By not killing them with neglect? Yeah, I don't like that. It's because the cops, of course, have been asked by the city council to, like, show up to the person that's, like, camping under a bridge or something and, like, take their shit and yeah. like politely ask them at gunpoint to stop existing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I think there's like even a church in or a collection of churches here in Longmont that are outperforming what we're doing in Boulder. Oh yeah. That's embarrassing. Yes. Like Absolutely. that's incredibly embarrassing. It really is. And in encouraging, whatever we bless the Christians doing the nice work. That's nice and helpful for the community, and helpful in a way that the community sometimes itself is a little too selfish to provide. Yeah, absolutely. So that is a nice thing. We're, we're appreciative of the kind folks in the community, but it's, I think, embarrassing on the level that like a few small organizations that really are just small businesses, you know, are able to outperform what we all do together. Yeah. That's bullshit. Yeah. That doesn't seem right. I mean, I get the appeal, man, when, you know, when COVID was happening, I mean, you know, last year, and we're all in lockdown, and I was losing my mind, 
I hadn't played a show in front of people in record-breaking time. And uh, I get the appeal of just wanting to, like, slip into something comfortable, like a warm bath and a Netflix binge and forget that anything is going on outside. And I did that for a while during the pandemic, and I started getting really miserable and crazy and borderline suicidal. And it was one day that I was at the corner of Canyon and Broadway, and I was like so self-obsessed and self-pitying and depressed. And I looked out the window and saw all those dudes in front of the band, band shell there, and they're freezing their asses off. And I was like, oh yeah, how do you stop like feeling miserable and hating yourself? You yeah. help somebody, dummy. So yeah. <laughs> I started doing that purely for my own selfish reasons to try to save my sanity. But that's how brains work. That's, yeah. It's not like uh, some manipulative tactic in the world. It's just like, you know, there are things that you can trigger, and one of them is this. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful, of course, idea. Thank you so much for coming on my stupid show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, just it's been a blast. blast. I, uh, I really like your theme song. Thank you very much. It's an instant <laughs> classic. I, I do, I do have the weirdest feeling at the beginning of the show. I always tell Grandma to to go to bed or whatever. Sometimes you know, Grandma's on medicine, right? And and like, whatever she what, stays what up. What kind of medicine is she? I don't know. Some kind of I don't know. And sometimes she says that like when she stays up late, she gets scared of late night TV. Of your show? No, but just like in general, I guess like it just sort of like. Well, TV Freaks in around. general is scary. I understand that. And if you're up late at night and on drugs, and perhaps you're a little infirm. She's a delightful lady, but I'm going to maybe I'm gonna maybe call and check on her. Grandma, you better be asleep. Anyway, Clay, thank you so much for coming on this yeah, show. Thanks for having me. The Gasoline Lollipops, uh, wonderful music. You find that in the world on the internet, which, get this, you're already on. So, it's really just a different... Click, click a different thing and all of a sudden tunes. Thanks for watching. <laughs>